Hi everyone and welcome to our Spring Garden Tour 2022. With this garden tour we're also celebrating our one year channel anniversary and I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all for your support, for joining us on our journey and for just being here watching our videos and all the wonderful feedback we have received. Thank you very much. Now, without further ado, let's get started with the garden tour. And this year, or this time, we are starting on the outside of our plot. In the background, you can see this beautiful wild cherry blooming in white. I don't think you have seen this on a video before, but today we thought we have to show you this one. Wild cherries grow here naturally in forests, and the one you can see in the background just grows in our fence line. So this just has come up naturally, we didn't plant it and we didn't want to cut it down either. To the right of it, you can see our Juneberry. This is a very old tree that has already been here when we bought this property. And the best view you can get actually from here, from the road, looking at it. And it's just getting into full bloom. So we wanted to show you that too. Now we're back in our plot and you can see another angle from the Juneberry in the background. And right here behind me is another wild cherry. This is a smaller one. And this one was already in our plot, just growing wild like the one in the fence. And we just replanted it and pruned it last year. And now it has a nice spot here and you can see full of white, beautiful blossoms. This is our front garden and we have landscaped this with soil mounds which start to get overgrown by moss as you can see in the background there. Uh, we're not quite finished yet with planting here. Last year we have planted Japanese hollies. You'll see when I start walking along and Portuguese laurel. And this one here is a Scots pine that we have transplanted, but unfortunately it has not survived the winter. Not quite sure why, because it was fine for a year and this winter it started to die off. Um, so we're gonna be looking for a replacement for this plant. Now moving further along to show you some more plants. So those small ones here are the Japanese hollies. This one here is a U, an English U. This one here, very nice evergreen shrub. And then here we have one boxwood. We try to avoid planting boxwood because of this boxwood moth we get in this area. But sometimes or most of the time, the Japanese hollies aren't available in a larger size. And this is when we buy boxwood instead. This is another U. This is a Japanese one. It has a little bit of a different a needle structure. They're a little bit larger than the ones of the English one. And here you can see a beautiful uh, moss mound. And looking closer, the moss is actually starting to get spores. And I'll point that out for you here. You can see these little green bits and these are the moss spores. So at the moment it's a little bit dry again. We've had weeks of dry weather in spring, which happens here quite a lot these days. We, the April showers have actually started two weeks ago, but now it's dried off again. But today, later on, we're expecting some rain, which would be really, really good for the plants. Then moving further along, here is our stepping stone pond that leads to our entranceway. We have not filled it yet this year. This is something we need to do. And we put last year this net over the pond and that is to catch all the leaves that come down from our big oak trees in the background. And this worked really, really well. So there's barely anything 
that fell through. There are a few little twigs that fell through the net that are in the pond that we need to clean out. But the rest, all the leaves, they really stayed on the net and it was easy to clean it off. So that's um, a great uh, idea to do it that way. Here you can see black bamboo. We have two plants. One is down in the garden and this one we split into several pieces and planted as a screening hedge here. And I've also pruned this last year to keep it to a certain height. Here near our entrance door, we grow horsetail reed. This is something you find a lot in Japan growing next to house walls. And this year we will try to source as much horsetail reed as possible because we want to plant some more here and also some more around the corner, which I will show you in a minute. Uh, where we live, this horsetail reed is available under pond plants, so in the pond plant section of nurseries. This may differ depending on where you live. Um, and this is why it's only available from about April time and then for a few months together with all other pond plants. We grow this here just in soil, so that works perfectly fine. It doesn't have to be planted in water, but it is important to keep it moist. So this section at the back here, you can see, may be a bit too dry sometimes because the soil in this area here gets quite dry. And this is why it doesn't grow that well. Here it grows better. Also, it has a little bit more light in this area but we'll try to compensate again by watering a lot this year. Then we've also just recently done these stepping stones. Maybe you have seen the video. I'll walk down. So this is slate and we've set those three stepping stones here and made actually steps here. They were originally just um, temporary steps, so to say. And then we re graveled this entire path. We also just recently so it all looks nice and clean again. This is the section where we want to plant new horsetail reed and you can see that the soil has settled a little bit here so a few it's a few inches lower than it used to be at the beginning when we did the, um, the rendering. You can see that the rendering stops here and now the soil is down here and so in order to hide that we want to plant horsetail reed all along this wall and also uh, along the other wall in the background there to tie it in with the ones we have there. So we'll make a video about that, given that we can source enough of that horsetail reed. Now walking through here, back to the pathway, here we have a combination of uh, boxwood and Japanese holly. The ones you can see here, these are deciduous azaleas. So they are just starting to wake up. The first uh, flower buds are coming out here. You can see a few and they flower first and then they get the leaves, but they are still a few weeks out. Now moving back onto the pathway, you can also see a combination of Japanese hollies and some boxwoods in the background there. In there you can see a flowering Fuji cherry. This one has an okay amount of flowers. It has kind of a shaded position, but that's fine. I'll show you some that are full later on on the tour. And here you can see the Japanese Andromeda, which are all in full bloom at the moment. I don't think we had that on videos before in the last year. Really nice. Then moving further along, In case you've seen our latest moss video, I started this experiment here with uh, putting moss and seeing what's happening regarding the birds, because I said that the birds are usually stealing moss that we uh, 
put that we plant. In this case, actually, it has not happened. So I found occasionally a piece of moss lying somewhere else, but I'm very surprised that this is still all in one place and where it should be. That's great. You can see at the moment that it's a little bit dry, but as I said, we're expecting rain later today, then it will be nice and green again. Here we have a golden larch that is about to open. There are tiny little green uh, needles starting to come out. And here I wanted to show you the Japanese larches. Those three here. And they are, you can I think already see from there that it's getting green and they are starting to come out as well. Let's walk further down in the garden. Last year on the tour, I walked on that pathway there. This year, let's walk here. And going past our arrow bamboo and behind it, the golden bamboo. The golden bamboo, especially in the last year, has become really tall, so the latest shoots, you see some of them are even uh, bending over a bit, so we will need to uh, prop them up. And here, this is a beautiful laurel. I don't think you've seen this so much in videos, maybe in one, and it's starting to bloom. Uh, you see these um, blossoms are starting to come out here. This laurel has already been here. We think it's about 30 years old, maybe even older. You can see by the size that it must have been growing here for quite a long time. Now let's move this way. On the ground you can see how much is covered in moss. At the moment it looks a bit yellowish, but also you see how much grass there is actually left in the background where it gets green. So soon uh, it's time to run the mower again, keep the grass, the remaining one, under control. In this area we have our rhododendron. Most of them have nice uh, blossoms, or they will have nice blossoms, like this one you see. The, they are starting to come out. It's still a bit too early for them to open up. They typically open up in May time here, but they're all looking really, really good. For most maples, it's still too early to open. Like this one is still closed at the moment, but I'm planning on doing a separate tour just about the Japanese maples. And I will talk about the cultivar names again once the leaves are actually starting to come out because at the moment they are still uh, too closed. Then let's continue this way. Here I want to show you another beautiful uh, Japanese Andromeda. This is a different type and this is absolutely full with blossoms. And I don't think I've ever seen it like that. And I think this is because we removed ivy from the big red pine right next to it. Maybe you've seen the video. And whilst the ivy was still there, this area or this little section here was always very dry. And so the ivy was growing on that tree here and it was really, really huge and we think it was planted intentionally. We didn't do that. That was already here when we bought the plot. And we thought that this ivy always uh, took up all the moisture from this piece of ground here. And since the ivy is gone, this one is growing beautifully, which is really great. Here we have another uh, rhododendron. This one normally blooms in purple, if I remember correctly. Also with nice uh, blossoms coming out. And in the background, this is a Portuguese laurel. This is an upright growing one. This one we do not prune because we want it to grow even a bit taller. This is a silver thorn because the leaves underneath, you can see, have this silver color. And here, 
on the ground we have some more boxwood. Here we have one out of two maples that are starting to open up. Uh, this is an orange stream and you can see the beautiful orange color of the young new leaves that have just come out. And in the background you can see the Fuji cherry. So that's another one we have and you see this one has an appropriate amount of light and sun and you see how full this is with blossoms. This one is our largest Nandina domestica or sacred bamboo. We have quite a lot of those in the garden. The red berries, they are starting to fade now and to fall off. During the winter, they are really uh, bright red, like you can see here. And it's a very beautiful accent in the winter picture. Right, then let's move on to this one. This is also a Fuji cherry. I think I pruned it in a video last year in this uh, upright growing shape and it's also full of blossoms and here we have one of our or actually the largest azalea we have really beautiful it's doing quite well here but too early for the blossoms for the azaleas right then let's uh, walk over the bridge oh and before we do this area here we have uh, gravel just recently and um, so it looks now nice and fresh again. Now walking along the pathway. Here's an area where we have our black pine and some mugo pines and also some more maples but also those aren't open yet. So let's walk this way today. And I will show you an area that you haven't seen yet. In this little grassy section next to the pond, we had a large old bush just there, which we took out just recently. That's because it didn't really fit and it, because it was so old, it was already here when we got the property and it just didn't really fit in the picture. And now, as you can see, this has opened up this entire corner and I'm gonna take you there. And this is a huge, Japanese quince. It's in pretty much full bloom at the moment, so I'm happy you can see that. And this will be one of the pruning jobs I want to do this summer or this spring, we will see, to actually bring this one back into shape. And then, this is the secret corner you have never seen before. Um, here we want to landscape a new section of our garden in Japanese style, of course, and to tie it in with the rest. The reason why this corner is just the way it is, so basically there's nothing, is because it was always kind of separate to the garden. We never really walked a lot there, uh, just with the mower to keep the grass short, and we never really had anything uh, properly planted in this corner. But this year, now that this bush is gone and the area has opened up, so that's gonna be a new project to plant and landscape this area. 
so you see how much space there is and we already have a few ideas but we'll do separate videos about that and run you through here you can also see another side of this japanese quince and how beautiful the blossoms are here a quick stop and a quick look at the pond um, right here next to it the Japanese irises are starting to grow and all the pond plants are also starting to come out so I've cleaned out that pond just recently I've done a video last year about how I cleaned that out and now it's all starting to come back to life okay then let's walk up to the next section Here we have a patch of Japanese azaleas and originally, and I spoke about it in previous tours, we had this entire area planted with Japanese azaleas, but they didn't really grow here very well. I think it may have been too dark, so we took them out and we decided to just leave it like that and encourage moss growth everywhere here because this area gets quite a lot of shade from the Japanese maples and moss will be growing just fine here. Now moving on to the dry area here with the water basin. This mound is turning out really beautiful with the moss. This year also here the birds didn't take anything. <laughs> That's really great. And here in the background we have actually reset the stone wall a little bit because we had one stone that was broken in there and so we've redone it a little bit and now this looks nice and tidy again. So this is all new again and we haven't put some gravel down here and here you can see the water basin and those here are mountain laurels and they get really nice waxy looking blossoms in uh, May time, May, June. Right next to it, you can see our black bamboo. So that's the other plant I was talking about before that we have also talked about in a previous video and pruned as well. And this is the other orange dream Japanese maple that is starting to open up. Really nice. Now, last on this tour, I would like to show you our flowering cherry plum, which is in full bloom at the moment. This is our flowering cherry plum. It opened up just a few days ago. The blossoms are going quickly this year though because it's already losing the petals and the leaves are coming out, which is usually a sign that the blossom is coming to an end. Normally in previous years, it has bloomed for probably two to three weeks, but this year it's a bit different because the weather is cold and then warm again. So it's a bit uh, probably confusing for the plants. Um, anyway, I just wanted to show you this. It's uh, so nice, it smells really, uh, good it has a light sweet scent and there are plenty of bees and bumblebees around it and very happy about the blossom right this brings me to the end of our garden spring tour this year i hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and see you next time bye <laughs>